man. Yeah, it was good too. Yeah. It was good. Get it together, self. It just like none of the sports seem real. And then my brother yeah. watched like five That's minutes exactly of football right. and then lost it. Exactly like, right. Oh, He's like, oh, whatever. Whatever. You know. Who starts today? Do I start? Hey, everybody. It's Kai. Welcome back to Make Me Smart. It's the Friday edition. Me and Molly. Well, I always like to, I don't know who, you know, producers know. get to decide who starts. I'm with you. So I don't want to. I'm wanna never on the right tab. Not one time. That's exactly right. Nope. Uh, anyway, it's Friday. <laughs> Economics on tap for some of us. I should just say right here at the top that the internet was lousy at my house again today. Thank you, internet company that serves my area that I won't name, but really has been completely unacceptable. Um, thus, I have to drive home, so I am not drinking. But uh, Charlton's on the other side of the studio glass here in downtown Los Angeles, having a beer. He's having a Deschutes, hazy, which is really good. I can vouch for that. Uh, um, and there he is having a sip. You're killing me, you son of a shit. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway. That's like insult to injury, man. The internet is out. I know. And then you didn't even think to bring a beer. Uh, no, I, I would have. I, I, You're I just being I responsible. I don't drive after consuming you. alcoholic beverages, yes. Um, yeah, that's, that's wise. But but you're in your basement. I, what, are you, what are you having? I'm not driving anywhere. Exactly. <laughs> I'm in my basement and uh, my the whole coast is on fire. Oh, it's unbelievable. Uh, I will probably not be going outside for days. No. So I'm just kicking off the weekend now with this pretty large glass of tequila <laughs> that's what i'm doing Mo molly wood drinking for both of us oh pretty my heavy pour lordy b but Oof. i put it in a cute little uh yes. aperitif glass yes. so, so, so it that makes it okay it's a liqueur like now. it's less than five oh. ounces <laughs> but it's not having a glass. it's not oh. less than five how many, ounces how much tequila are you having molly i'm having a glass I'm having a glass. I'm having a glass. I'm having oh a water Lord. glass of tequila. I'm just saying it was oh between that goodness. and this as far as glasses go, because fair enough. What the hell? Holy cow. Yeah, it's it's unbelievable. I don't know. You know, so the, Charlie Warzel wrote a really good piece in, in the New York Times earlier this week as the air was getting just super bad out here. And and he's in Montana now, but he had been on the East Coast. And and he made the point that that I completely um understood having when i moved here 20 years ago you don't understand fire season in the west until you've lived through fire season in the west you know and how it mm -hmm. becomes um this part of your your day-to-day -day existence more than you can even absorb in the newspapers and i remember somebody saying to me oh yeah it's september and october and that's the heat of the fire season and i'm like oh come on how bad can it be and then <sighs> and now it's so much worse 20 years later it's crazy yep yeah crazy yeah it is really real for those of you who uh may live somewhere else or have not been watching i, I mean i'm <laughs> if you're anywhere in the united states like yeah. our smoke is over your town so yeah. sorry yeah um but yeah it's we've just had the weird today's air quality i think it's similar there i mean oregon and washington are horrific our yeah. air quality is well up over 300 yeah, we're and, 280 something uh, in yeah. up, up in the foothills at my house. Yep. Yeah. It's So if you hear bad. me coughing, it's not <clears throat> my huge glass of tequila. <laughs> it could Smoke. be, but probably isn't. It's a um, Casamigos a Reposado. It's very it's almost like a bourbon. It's real caramel. Are, are, are you are you, a, are you a tequila connoisseur? Oh, sorry, we're getting down a little rabbit hole here, but, but I wouldn't you... say I'm a connoisseur, but I really I have recent like in the last three or four years have really gotten into tequila. And a friend introduced me to Reposado, just like a sipping tequila situation. Yeah. And I was like, what? It was amazing. And of course the Batanga. Yeah. But I literally couldn't even be bothered to mix anything with anything right now. I just poured myself a big Fair glass enough. of tequila. Fair enough. All right, it's let us um, delightful. let us do. I'm sure it is, and I'm uh, believe me when I tell you there are beers in the fridge for when I get home. Um, should we do some news here on yeah, a Friday let's in, do it. in the end times? Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> um, why, don't, why don't you go first? Oh, mine's about fire. So <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's appropriate. Um, I found this great piece in ProPublica that was actually from the end of August. And it's so interesting because I had just been having this conversation with a friend yesterday. She was like, what is the deal with fires? Like, why are, are that was just a little Seinfeld and it was an accident. <laughs> um, sorry. She's like, what, why are the fires so bad? And I'm like, cause we don't burn. Like we don't, you know, and I, oh, I grew oh, up in Montana. Right, I read right, 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 right. because we don't burn. We yeah. don't do preventative burns. Right. And I grew up in Montana. I read Charlie Warzel's piece and I was like, uh-huh, yep. because 
I, in fact, I went to a college that is renowned for its forestry school. And I was like, this is known science that yeah. preventative burning yep. keeps fires from getting as bad as they are. And so ProPublica did this nice long read that's just infuriating. And it's about how we, there, there is no scientific dissent about how to prevent fires. It is all about prescribed burns right. and managed burns. Nobody disagrees that that is a really good way to keep fires from getting really bad. And yet it doesn't happen. And it doesn't happen for a lot of reasons that have to do with like screwed up incentives around money. For example, lots of people make lots of money selling helicopters and 747s and fire retardant. Mm -hmm. Even though when you fly a 747 and you drop a load of fire retardant, that's mostly over trees, not houses. So it's like not even a particularly good ROI, but people make billions of dollars like sending, you know, selling these devices that there's misaligned incentives around pay. There's generally like nimbyism about smoke. I mean, when I was growing up in Montana, we also talked about fire season because it's like when things would burn naturally. Now, right. to be clear, it is not, nobody was doing enough prescribed burning there either. But I honestly, I had kind of a little tantrum because it is very true. Like, you know that I more than anybody am into the topic of climate change. It yeah, is changed. Yeah, yeah. It is real. But I get a little frustrated when I see, you know, the governor of California being like, this is climate change. Climate change is real. This is just 100%. And I'm like, this is not 100% climate change. This is also people who don't want to do prescribed burns. They're afraid they'll get out of control. People complain about the smoke. We don't want to spend the money. Like there's a whole bunch of reasons. Yeah, but, but that does but now that we're in a sound bite, right? That's the catch. In it. Yeah. 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 And we're in it. And now, even if we started prescribed burns, for one thing, the non-fire season is now officially so short that people aren't exactly even sure when they would do it, thanks to climate change. Yeah. And there's so much unburned brush just in California that it's unlikely to happen this all of this is going to get so much worse and it's yeah. like 50 year old settled science and we are by the way just in the beginning of fire season that's the part that kills me i'm like we're like two weeks into it man oh yeah just started yeah yeah it was not i mean last year i didn't have to put on my n95 until october the year before that it was november this year it was august and we know how to prevent this. Like, this is just, a, I feel like 2020 is a story of like things we definitely knew how to prevent and just didn't want to. K. <laughs> Hence, K. big glasses of tequila. <laughs> Such a big pour. <laughs> Glad, just, uh, I, I noticed it's, sit back. it's plural now. Uh, okay. So uh, I'm going to do mine. It's a little reprise or reprise. I can never get it right of an item I had earlier with a tag along question. And that is this whole thing that the president did with the payroll tax deferral. And again, it's a deferral because the taxes are still due. But Richard Rubin, who writes for the New York, uh, for the Wall Street Journal, had a really good tweet today in which uh, he was asked this question. Uh, if the payroll tax deferral in 2021 gets an act passed where they waive having to pay it back, right? Where Congress actually says, you know what? We let you not pay this, and now you don't have to forever. What happens to those who opted out? In other words, what mm -hmm. happens to the people whose company said, no, 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 we're going to still keep taking that tax because it's due, right? What happens? And that's not just like a couple of companies. It's big bleeping companies, right? It's companies like CVS and Wells Fargo and bunches of those, right? The Postal Service, all of those are not doing this deferral thing. And so what's going to happen to their employees when, as is actually entirely possible uh, Congress decides to let people keep the money that Congress said they didn't have to pay, right? A and wow. Richard Rubin's answer, which is a straight up legit one was, great question, depends how Congress writes it. They could just offer it to those who deferred or go broader, could be a messy political choice. Yes, it could. And I just, mm -hmm. I, I guess, here's what this is, right? Because, because look, this is a new story. We've talked about it a couple of times. I've beaten it up. I've beaten the president up about it. And I think it's a, just a bad policy decision because, oh my God, social security. But also it's just a sign of my irritability that I keep coming back to this thing. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just generally irritated right now. I'm irritated yeah. about the weather. I'm irritated about politics. I'm irritated that I can't have a beer. I'm irritated about a lot of things. And that just kind of got me. 
It's funny how there are some stories like that that are just like your own personal hangnail. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, like the that's one exactly that you right. just can't stop that's being exactly mad right. about. Yeah. That's exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I, 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 I'm just, I see you. Just, you're like, come well, on. Man. It's, it's because it's an utter, utter, utter failure of burning. Yeah. Like it should never come to the president having to make what appears to be a politically expedient executive order that he in no I, way has the authority to I, make I, I, that I, I, is I, 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 poorly thought out at best because Congress just like didn't show up. I, I don't think you need to say it appears to be politically driven. I mean, come on. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, All politically, right. okay. like All fully. Right. Okay. I, yeah, I put in All appears right. in the totally wrong place. Let's yeah. be clear. Yeah, yeah, this is just like a PR stunt gone horrifically wrong that is yeah. going to have actual financial implications on people trying to retire. Everybody works for the federal government, every mm -hmm. company like this is not how governing should happen. And this is actually why we have a better system that we wrote down a long time ago. And even though we could probably use some updates, like that's one of the things that should be working better for sure. Yeah. Uh, okay. Bob Woodward. All right. Charlton, if you worth. could, if you could put your beer, from that button. Be we caught you before you had too many. Right? Uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm just a little bitter. All right. So look, I'm going to fess up right here. I do not have a make me smile because I just, there, nothing struck me. And sometimes that Aww. happens. Sometimes that happens. Yeah. You know, yeah. Is what it is. I'm okay with that. Everybody else. So everybody else has to it, be okay with that too. If you want it as a bonus, I just pasted in the one that a bunch of people sent us today about the little boy, the little two year old boy with a cleft lip. Oh, I And then it. they found a puppy with a cleft lip. Like the no, guy just that's amazing. happened. And it's so awesome. Like his dad just happened to show up at the shelter and there happened to be this puppy that had just come in from a thousand miles away that had a cleft lip and they were like, oh, this puppy's not going to get adopted. And the guy was there for chickens. Like he wasn't even looking for a dog. <laughs> and then he was like, oh my God, we have to get this puppy. And then the little boy who's already had like three surgeries was like, the puppy looks like me. Oh my God. Oh, that's I didn't put it in because I was like, I'm going to cry, which oh, man. I'm working on now. That's awesome. That is a good but one. Yeah, that one. That's a good that one. one is my favorite. So Tony, Tony put it on the show page. That's awesome. Yeah. Look at that. It is. Bentley, Bentley Boyer's in his new puppy. Cool. Oh, that's so cute. Plus, oh my God, the pictures yeah. are so cute. And then he, they guy. already have a dog that's like a great, ma like a bull mastiff, like a oh. huge one. And then all three yeah. of them take naps on the dog bed, like the baby and the puppy and the bull. Oh my God. <laughs> Dogs. <laughs> that's awesome. My actual one is mm. on topic, yes. on the topic of fires. There was, okay. there was wow. a good policy thing in California today, which I don't know if, if people realize, but um, inmates, prison inmates do a lot of firefighting yeah. in California, oh, yeah. which is kind of messed up when you consider how much actual firefighters make. But what yeah. then was happening for decades is that these inmates, you know, who committed nonviolent offenses, probably lots of people who were in there for like weed do all of this work as inmates, but then they get out and they have federal records or they have, I'm sorry. So they have, then they have uh, records, mm -hmm. prison records and can't get hired as firefighters, mm -hmm. which is insane. So governor Newsom just today signed a law that allows inmate firefighters in California to have their records expunged so that they can then become professional uh, firefighters cool. once they're released from prison. That's cool. And that is I a wrong that. righted. Yeah. Yep. And that is a good one. Because fire is my topic today, including fire in the belly, you, you. thanks to my large glass of tequila. <laughs> <laughs> she is themed inside and out, ladies and I gentlemen. I love a theme. Mollywood on a Friday. Theme. How about that? <laughs> oh, my Lord and me. That was good. That was good. Uh, yeah. All right. There you go. Puppy good pictures. Good stuff. We got fires and puppy pictures and a little tequila. We're done. We're done. That's us on a Friday. That's it. Um, everybody stay healthy this weekend. Stay good. If you live in the fire zone, stay inside. Wear your mask. Stay inside. All that good stuff. I know. It's like the worst thing ever for us to tell you to stay Miserable. inside. I have I committed to learning with my child how to play Counter Strike Go. Not, really? no, not a language, not some gardening. We're not going to bake any bread. Is. What is Counter Strike Go? We're going to play Counter Strike Go, a very violent video game, until, <laughs> until I can get a headshot without aim help. Uh, that's the plan. See you Monday. See you Monday. We're out of here. Make Me Smart is produced and directed by Rose Collin, who once again is probably saying, what am I doing have here? I Tony done? Wagner what have I done? is our digital producer. We're at an old fashioned today for some reason. I don't even know. He also put a little pumpkin spice whiskey in the Slack channel about which, no. Ben Hethcoats produces video along with the hardest men, hardest work and intern in show business, Ethan Ferrets. Erica Phillips right. writes our newsletters. Also those skills on your smart speakers. 
She does those too. Shout out to those of you giving shout outs to Ethan Parrots in the YouTube chat today. <laughs> and thanks for joining us. Today's program was engineered by Charlton Thorpe. It's all about the, the cast, friends. Our theme music was composed by Ben Tolliday and Daniel Ramirez. The senior producer is Bridget Bodner and the executive director of On Demand and is the Tara Nieves. We have not been Are disavowed sure? yet. So congratulations on another successful there you week. Go. There you go. Boom, done. Cheers. Friday. I, I would if I had one. I'll do it in absentia. <laughs>